but I felt impressed to talk to you about excellence. What is excellence? It's different than perfection. In my father's book, Truth Out in the Open, 500-page manual, he put, and all of that he did by tape recorder, most me holding a, a recorder in his face on his knees, me on my knees in the secret place. And we spent many hours together in the secret place and I would hold a cassette recorder, a micro cassette, and say, just talk, Daddy, just talk. Daddy had a great state, but perfection is the highest level of excellence. Excellence is a place of movement. Excellence is a journey. It's not a state. It's not even a destination. Excellence is a collection of steps of quality. Excellence will change. Find my one note. By the way, let me just throw out, there is a, um, computers are important if information's important to you. Learning a computer will be important to you. I also want to mention that uh, that little, there's an Outlook program, and that part called Task is a very fascinating and powerful key to processing delegation. I consider the, the, the section called Task to be one of the most important parts of communication with others through your, uh, through your computer. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you really, really wanna try to move away from paper as much as possible and move toward a computer so that you instantly can, can send your notes to anybody you want to or receive them. A computer is an information system. It's a master information system for gathering information, filing information, retrieving information, and sending information to others. It's also a, a system for monitoring information and deciding what you see first and what you don't see. It's important to remove things from your eyesight, remove things from your vision so you can stay focused. You continuously becoming a man of excellence. There's, I, I'll do it in the main service, but there's. A, let me see how many things of excellence I've. Uh, I marked for myself. Um, there's 105 areas, excellence, excellence in attitude, excellence in character, excellence in conversation, excellence in delegation, excellence in decision making, excellence in, excellence in reacting to fa uh, failure. Excellence in developing relationship. To me, excellence is the highest quality you're presently capable of. Excellence is the highest quality you're presently capable of performing. That's why it changes. A seven-year-old is further along than a four-year-old, hopefully. Time gives you access to improving excellence. Excellence is, is quality. Excellence is quality. And there's excellence is learned. It's learned through what you see. It's learned through what you experience. It's learned through mentorship and example. And some men excellent in the accumulation of wealth have not developed excellence in building family relationship. Some that are excellent in building family relationship are not excellent in great conversation or delegation of responsibility. Excellence is real or critical in your life. And you'll know the areas you're not excellent. And you can't be great in everything. You have to decide what I'm willing to be lesser in. When you decide your focus, you decide what's not your focus. And we have a saying, what we call staff, your weakness which means find someone else who's excellent in an area that you're not and integrate them into your life. You reward them or get their assistance. In organization, there's actually people that come into your home and, and organize all your shelves and all your material. And they'll ask you what you want to see and what you don't want to see and what you need. And they'll customize your environment to meet your need and to give you what you need. And excellence... Uh, 
Dr. Rob Thompson said one day, I, he was talking about excellence. I said, you know, I never think about excellence. He said, I think about it every second of my life. And I got to thinking about it. What he called excellence, I called order and accuracy and quality. So there's different words for excellence. And uh, there's a lot of areas of excellence that we want to get in. But we want to become a man of excellence. Excellence in, in communication accurately speaking to others what they need to hear, should hear, taking the time. Excellence requires time. It requires attentiveness. It also requires an example. You need someone to emulate, someone to watch. You ever seen something say, oh, that's what I'd like. Excellence involves uh, change. Today's excellence will be tomorrow's common mediocre, mediocrity. Where you are today, someday will be a yesterday. You know, today, some, so excellence is a constant changing. Excellence in health is different than excellence in wealth. Excellence in health is different than excellence in attitude. All of these things matter and we want to become a man of excellence. Let me go to my, uh, Somehow I misplaced my. There's 365 topics that I study and uh, file accordingly. Let me find what I put for today. The Bible's full of scripture. I was shocked last night. I worked about 2 30 or 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, I was stunned at how much reference there was to excellence, right words. Bible says Daniel was a man excellent of spirit. The, the whole Bible is a, is, a, is, a, is a book of excellence, how to move from where you are to where God wants you to be. The reward of continuous movement toward excellence is continuous pleasure continuous self-confidence. Excellence has a reward. We'll talk about that way. Number one, you must define what excellence is to you personally. If you're going to become a man of excellence, you must define what to you is excellence. You can have, you can have excellence in appearance but not be excellence in punctuality and fulfilling your word. You can have excellence in appearance, but not be excellence in conversation, not have excellence. So what is excellence to you? What is excellence to you? To me, excellence is operating or performing at my highest level in the immediate moment. It's giving total attention. When you create moments of excellence, now you create hours and days of excellence. You want to give excellence to a moment, to a moment, but you personalize that. What is excellence to you? Is it having a, a new car or is it having a clean car? Is it having a house paid for or having a house beautiful for your family? To Sam Walton, excellence is in the pricing. To Neiman Marcus people and Brother Stanley, it's excellence in quality. And if you go to Harrods in London, you'll see excellence because they've added beauty and detail to all of the things around them. I was upset about 22 years ago over a book, a little set of books that I had, and the little icon on the front was slightly crooked. It was embossed in gold. It was gorgeous, blue and gold. And I told the printer, the lady who processed, I said, meet me for supper. And I sat there and I laid them all out to her. And I said, uh, I want you to look at that slightly crooked. Now I can't use these. Now we're going to have a, a bonfire and I'm going to burn all of these. And the staff is going to get, we're going to have a bonfire and we'll gather around. 
and we're going to burn these books and I'm going to give a talk on excellence. I said, if I were you, I'd get out of the printing business. The fact that you can even, the fact that you can even give me this book with a straight face and charge me for it sends me a message about you because everything you do sends a message. Everything you don't do sends a message. I said, look at that. And I managed to strip her of all sense of value and significance. And uh, when I was through, God spoke to me about excellence and attitude. <laughs> I was as messed up as she was. <laughs> Maybe more so. I was so consumed with excellence in the appearance of my book that excellence in my attitude never occurred. One of the keys in developing and becoming a man of excellence is to identify people of excellence and pursue for counsel, advice, and example. Customize, find out what excellence is to you at this season of your life. What, what matters the most to you right now? Number two, find scriptural examples of excellence to follow. Find scriptural examples of excellence. When God finished his creation of the universe, he said, it's good. He looked at it, it's good. God was pleased with what he had done. And he looked at it. He evaluated it. Becoming a man of excellence will require continuous evaluation, continuous examination, personal analysis. Tony Robbins, the famed motivator, states that one of the keys to success is continuously evaluating the results of your efforts. At the end of the day, reviewing what you've done, what could have been done differently, what could have been delegated. Excellence will require time. You'll have to do less to do better. J. Paul Getty, the billionaire, said, I've seen as many people fail from attempting too many things as attempting too few. Who are Let's, let's identify three people of excellence in the Bible. Daniel is an outstanding example. Now, the king did not want conversation with him until he had trained for, why, well, I can't believe it, Brother Jimmy. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it. Or will you be here for the day, for the morning? Are you ready to bless us today? Good. Brother Jimmy McDonald. Um, a person of excellence needs scriptural examples. How was Daniel excellent? Now, the king required his mentorship before he gave him access. And Daniel was willing to train to become a person of excellence. There's a lot of areas of excellence. Excellence in receiving correction. I see uh, recently I gave a message on the seven biggest, the deadliest mistakes I see people around me making. One of them is their rejection of correction. They see correction as criticism. Criticism is fault finding without an alternative, an option. It's finding fault without protection. But correction is literally that. It's an impartation of information and knowledge and wisdom. Daniel was excellence in spirit. We'll talk about becoming seven keys in becoming a person of excellence and looking for scriptural examples. How was Daniel a man of excellence? He was excellent in his character because he wouldn't partake of the king's meat, but he was excellent in communication because he asked very politely and very openly for his integrity and his opinion to be uh, tested. 
Integrity invites scrutiny. It doesn't dread scrutiny because scrutiny will verify and confirm. And Daniel said, give me 10 days to prove my philosophy. And then he offered an option, if I don't work out for you, if what I do doesn't, is not at your level, then I will go with your, your system. Master communicator. Esther was a person of excellence. She was excellent in her beauty, which gave her access to the king. But excellence in mentorship, receiving the mentorship of Mordecai. Ruth was a person of excellence. Boaz commented on it. Everyone says that you treat your mother-in-law better than seven sons would treat their father or their mother, you know. And it's a, it's a very powerful, very powerful picture of excellence. We see her performing late at night. We see her long hours. And Boaz noted that. And he noted that her excellence had been noted by servants because excellence is impossible to hide. Excellence doesn't require promotion. Excellence, or it, it promotes itself. It, it's, it's obvious. You can hide a flaw, but you can't hide excellence. You can hide a flaw for a season, but you can't hide excellence. And Ruth was noted. There's some incredible scriptures that talks about excellence, and because of it now, this is what uh, happens. Another example of excellence is Joseph. Excellence in his reaction to false accusation. He didn't write a book about it. He didn't defend himself. He did not perpetuate the offense. He learned discretion from false accusation. The scripture is just absolutely phenomenal with examples of excellence. Paul was excellent in his communication, clarification of the gospel, articulate. The Bible says a man who's excellent with right and knows how to speak right words will have access to kings and leaders. A man who is diligent, which means excellent in the completion and execution of an assignment. Diligence means speedy attention to an assigned task. Instant acceptance of an instruction. You will not be able to perform at your highest level every moment of the day. You will not be able to perform every hour of your life with excellence in every department, but you start moving. There's parts of my life that look like a palace. There's parts of my life that look like a pig pen. I looked this morning at my bed, and for some reason, I like to put stuff on my bed. I have no idea why. It must be from childhood. I'm probably daddy's fault, something daddy did. But for some reason, I like to put my Bibles on my bed, and I want to put my books on my bed. Maybe that's my replacement to a wife. But I put all that material on my bed, and I looked this morning, and I said, now who would believe I'm speaking on excellence today? <laughs> who would believe it? There's excellence in the area of order. Your closet, you know. Order means the accurate arrangement of things. Excellence in learning how to impart training to others. Excellence in persuasion, in the art of sequencing information for acceptability. Giving you knowledge so that you can receive it and so that you can build credibility. Who are scriptural examples of excellence that you see? Excellence means highest quality you're presently able to perform or excel or execute. Perfection means the highest quality possible ever by anyone. That's perfection. Why do we move perfection? I, I, I heard so many preachers state, you know, you can't be perfect, but you got to try. Well, now, why would I get in the water to swim across the ocean if I'm not going to reach it? But the purpose of moving toward perfection is to experience the benefit of change, the rewards of improving yourself, because every step toward excellence creates pleasure. 
experiencing pleasure is one factor in your life, but learning the art of perpetual pleasure is another. (laughs) It's one thing to create a wonderful moment in your life, but learning how to move them closer together is a marvelous gift. And that's what you want to do. You don't really want to go from one event to another with great wilderness between them. You really want to close the gap between Egypt and Canaan. How many understand that? You you really don't want to live. Now, that's just why sometimes, sometimes the only product you have is hope. But you really don't want to live with a lot of hope. You really want to live with ex- the experience of what you're hoping for. How I many don't you don't always want to be coming up for air? Oh, I've got another chance to breathe. You really want to learn to swim. There are scriptural examples of excellence. Third, recognize that excellence is continuous change. Con- recognize that excellence is continuous change. Number three, the third master key to becoming a man of excellence means change is inevitable. It's important, it's rewardable, it's advantageous because it increases your reward. Excellence, any movement toward excellence is a move away from mediocrity. And so you're constantly moving. Luke 2.52 says Jesus grew in favor with God and man. Four, you must identify the eventual rewards of excellence. You must identify the rewards of excellence. One is acceptance by those of character, leadership, and influence. When you become a person of excellence in your thought and in your focus, you will be pursued. You will be reached for. And I consider One of the factors in knowing your development is who decides to reach for you, who pursues you. If you open a magazine from Palm Springs, there'll be a man there, a a dentist, who says the fame movie stars have sought his help to whiten their teeth. And he's wanting to use Oprah and others as credibility. People who have money and who are into excellence reach for me. And if, if, you, um, if you, let's say you're going to have heart surgery. Do you call around to see who is the cheapest in Dallas? Perhaps I can get a guy who's never done it for this is his first one. He'll give me half price. I'll be his experiment. Would that be your approach? I don't think so. Because the excellence of his capabilities with your heart matters greatly to you. You will pay any price for excellence in some areas. You must identify the eventuality of excellence. One of the things I like, and my people I establish, I will always order the best. Doesn't mean the best price. You've often heard you get what you pay for. I never have. I never have got what I paid for. I got more, I got less, but I never got what I paid for. I paid big prices for things. I remember vacuum cleaners that I bought, and they said $400. This is, it didn't work worth a dime. The price charged is not an indication of value and quality. Look at church, you come for free. <laughs> so you really can't go by price. How do you verify quality or excellence? Reputation, longevity in business. The other day they approached me with something and they, the, the staff was wanting to change companies with something and I said, and so I told uh, my manager, my my executive department, I said, these are, these are some questions to ask. How long have they been in business? 
Not how much they're saving us in money. How long have they been in business? Did they start up a year ago? Because the people I've done business with, I've known him for 22 years. So I've got to see how long has he been in business. Two, who are the clients? Who are their other clients? And what is their credible testimony regarding their exchange or business? I want to see faxes and emails testifying to their quality. Three, are they salesmen or people of integrity? Do you know selling is different? Selling is different. Lee Iacocca documented in his book, Straight Talk, the requirements of Robert, Robert McNamara, who was the vice president of Ford Motor Company. He also was secretary of defense for the United States government. Robert McNamara would not permit him to come and present verbally in conversation any proposal because Lee Iacocca was a salesman, which is a good thing. We're all salesmen. There's not a person in the world who's not a salesman because you're presenting a product, whether it's yourself or something else. We're all salesmen. The preacher's a salesman. He is selling people on the rewards of accepting Christ. But he did not want the effect of his emotional persuasive personality. He wanted to see in print, I require everything documented. I will not require, I will not accept an invitation strictly on the phone. I want a printed copy that said, you said this because my experience is that people are thinking one thing and they say something else. How many know people like that? Their mind has these things, but they give you number one, number seven, number eight, and then they think they gave you the whole table of contents when they didn't. So I want to see documentation. I never tire of the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference, right and wrong, evil and righteousness, difference in people, difference in a countenance, difference in a moment, like the blind man crying out to Jesus. The dominant purpose for wisdom, and don't you love the wisdom of God? I'm so thankful you're listening today and watching and being a part of the internet, telling others about it. And I hope you're getting, by the way, I hope you're getting my daily podcast every single day on your iPod or your MP3, every single day, two minutes of wisdom. Be a blessing. Sometimes I go a little over because I get excited. I want you to be a part of this ministry. I believe that when you get involved with God, he gets involved with you. I am one of the ministers of the gospel who believe the words of Jesus. I believe every word he said. When he told Peter that there would be a hundredfold return on any investment in the gospel, in Mark 10, 28 through 30, I believed him. When the word of God says in Malachi 3, that if I bring the tithe, which is 10% of my income, and the offering back to him, that he would open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing I don't have room enough to receive. I believe him. Why would I believe God about heaven and hell and not believe him about the blessing of the Lord? I want to pray over the seeds that you have been planting in this ministry. And by the way, I have an incredible gift you're going to love. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever offered. We're asking the Holy Spirit for 300 partners this week who will set aside a seed of $300 for our outreaches. I need your help. I want you to help me. Not just to feed a thousand children a day, which we do, or a thousand families, or underwrite the wisdom of Asia Bible College, or to underwrite the tent factory in South Africa, or the home of hope, but that we can go into 100 countries with the gospel. I'm holding in my hand the wisdom quick scan Bible. The wisdom quick scan Bible. I have never in my life found a Bible easier to read. As you know, for many years, I've read the Bible through 40 chapters a day, every single month of my life. When I found out that I could offer it to you inside of some of the teaching that I've been doing and I'll do today, I want you to have it. Call me right now, plant your seed of 300 and watch God move.
But for some reason, I like to put my Bibles on my bed, and I want to put my books on my bed. Maybe that's my replacement to a wife. But I put all that material on my bed, and I looked this morning, and I said, now who would believe I'm speaking on excellence today? <laughs> who would believe it? There's excellence in the area of order. Your closet, you know, order means the accurate arrangement of things. Excellence in learning how to impart training to others. Excellence in persuasion, in the art of sequencing information for acceptability, giving you knowledge so that you can receive it and so that you can build credibility. Who are scriptural examples of excellence that you see? Excellence means highest quality you're presently able to perform or excel or execute. Perfection means the highest quality possible ever by anyone. That's perfection. Why do we move perfection? I, I, I heard so many preachers state, you know, you can't be perfect, but you got to try. Well, now, why would I get in the water to swim across the ocean if I'm not going to reach it? But the purpose of moving toward perfection is to experience the benefit of change, the rewards of improving yourself, because every step toward excellence creates pleasure. Experiencing pleasure is one factor in your life, but learning the art of perpetual pleasure is another. <laughs> it's one thing to create a wonderful moment in your life, but learning how to move them closer together is a marvelous gift. And that's what you want to do. You don't really want to go from one event to another with great wilderness between them. You really want to close the gap between Egypt and Canaan. How many understand that? You, you really don't want to live. Now, that's just why sometimes, sometimes the only product you have is hope. But you really don't want to live with a lot of hope. You really want to live with ex the experience of what you're hoping for. I mean, don't, you don't always want to be coming up for air. Oh, got another chance to breathe. You really want to learn to swim. There are scriptural examples of excellence. Third, recognize that excellence is continuous change. Con recognize that excellence is continuous change. Number three, the third master key to becoming a man of excellence means change is inevitable it's important, it's rewardable, it's advantageous because it increases your reward. Excellence, any movement toward excellence is a move away from mediocrity. And so you're constantly moving. Luke 2.52 says Jesus grew in favor with God and man. Four, you must identify the eventual rewards of excellence. You must identify the rewards of excellence. One is acceptance by those of character, leadership, and influence. When you become a person of excellence in your thought and in your focus, you will be pursued. You will be reached for. And I consider one of the factors in knowing your development is who decides to reach for you, who pursues you. If you open a magazine from Palm Springs, there'll be a man there, a dentist, who says the fame movie stars have sought his help to whiten their teeth. And he's wanting to use Oprah and others as credibility. People who have money and who are into excellence reach for me. And if, if, you, um, if you, let's say you're going to have heart surgery. Do you call around to see who is the cheapest in Dallas? 
perhaps I can get a guy who's never done it for this is his first one. He'll give me half price. I'll be his experiment. Would that be your approach? I don't think so. Because the excellence of his capabilities with your heart matters greatly to you. You will pay any price for excellence in some areas. You must identify the eventuality of excellence. One of the things I like, and my people I establish, I will always order the best. Doesn't mean the best price. You've often heard you get what you pay for. I never have. I never have got what I paid for. I got more, I got less. But I never got what I paid for. I paid big prices for things. I remember vacuum cleaners that I bought, and they said $400. This is, it didn't work worth a dime. The price charged is not an indication of value and quality. Look at church. You come for free. <laughs> so you really can't go by price. How do you verify quality or excellence, reputation, longevity in business. The other day, they approached me with something, and they, the, the staff was wanting to change companies with something, and I said, and so I told uh, my manager, my, my executive department, I said, these are, these are some questions to ask. How long have they been in business? Not how much they're saving us in money. How long have they been in business? Did they start up a year ago? Because the people I've done business with, I've known him for 22 years. So I've got to see how long has he been in business. Two, who are the clients? Who are their other clients? And what is their credible testimony regarding their exchange or business? I want to see faxes and emails testifying to their quality. Three, are they salesmen or people of integrity? Do you know? Selling is different. Selling is different. Lee Iacocca documented in his book, Straight Talk, the requirements of Robert, Robert McNamara, who was the vice president of Ford Motor Company. He also was secretary of defense for the United States government. Robert McNamara would not permit him to come and present verbally in conversation any proposal because Lee Iacocca was a salesman, which is a good thing. We're all salesmen. There's not a person in the world who's not a salesman because you're presenting a product, whether it's yourself or something else. We're all salesmen. The preacher's a salesman. He is selling people on the rewards of accepting Christ. But he did not want the effect of his emotional, persuasive personality. He wanted to see... In print, I require everything documented. I will not require, I will not accept an invitation strictly on the phone. I want a printed copy that said, You said this. Because my experience is that people are thinking one thing and they say something else. How many know people like that? Their mind has these things, but they give you number one, number seven, number eight, and then they think they gave you the whole table of contents when they didn't. So I want to see documentation. But you want to identify them. So I ask questions because I believe questions decide discoveries, decide solutions. I believe the master key to life is the questions. Asking yourself the questions. What do I hate? What do I enjoy? When do I love it? What three people motivate me the most? In whose presence does my gift emerge? In whose presence does my weakness emerge? What environment do I require for my gift to flourish? You know, I continuously ask questions. I continuously ask questions. I labor for precision in questions. Who are those who respond favorably to my counsel? Who are those who refuse to pursue counsel? Who are those who seek counsel? I just, I continuously ask questions. What is the proof of somebody's passion? What is the evidence this person has passion? What is the evidence they don't have passion? I consider the greatest ability to develop in your life is the ability to ask quality questions. In the 30 years of Jesus, 
life before he entered three and a half years of ministry, the only photograph God thought was important for us to see in 30 years of his life was the day he asked questions. It was not the $4 million gift of the Queen of Sheba nor her nine-month journey on camels and horses to meet Solomon. It was her questions that distinguished her from all the masses. Your questions create access. Your questions reveal passion. And so you must continuously identify the rewards of excellence. One of the rewards of excellence is it eliminates the need to replay decision-making. The moment I buy the best, I don't have to go back and wonder if I did it right. The moment I do the best, if I put my best into a moment, when I started my ministry, after a service, I would labor and toil to replay in my mind. I'd replay the whole service. I spent hours replaying the service. Oh, what should I have done different? What did I do different? What should I have done different? What could I have done differently? I spend very little time on that now because I give my best and give all of my attention to that moment. I give my best to that moment. Identify the rewards of excellence. Excellence in communication preserves relationships. Excellence in order will save 50% of your time because 50% of all employee time is spent looking for things they can't find. Just imagine, you that have a payroll, half the time of your people, by the way, there's a large percentage of your people that look on the internet for non-job related items. Third, or four, or fifth, invest excellence in moments. Invest excellence in moments. Don't look at excellence as an experience once a week. It is a moment-by-moment moment experience. How do you bring excellence to a moment? Because a moment is a parent, it produces children, results, reactions, rewards. A moment is a live thing. You've heard me teach on God gives us moments. And moments are live organisms, live organisms. They are live messengers. And you must unwrap moments carefully, meticulously, with expectation of its difference. Every moment, God hides his gifts in moments. And he sends you moments. And in that moment, you invest moment with scrutiny, analysis. You look at a moment, what is the reward of this moment? I was having supper the other night with two precious men of God, Dr. Mar Cirillo and Tommy Barnett, a longtime friend. And I hadn't been around Tommy in a long time. He's got an incredible church in Phoenix. They run about, I think, 15,000. It's a $100 million complex. He started the Dream Center with his son, Matthew, et cetera. And, uh, but I had not been with Tommy. And so we both, in, in years, I, had, I used to preach for him a lot in Phoenix, but I hadn't been there in a long time. And we were talking. So immediately, I began, I just got through preaching. He preached before I did, and then I preached after him with Mar Cirillo. And then we had supper together, the four of us with Teresa Cirillo, the wonderful wife of uh, Mar Cirillo. And I found this moment, as I do every moment, unwrapping what is the difference. I looked at Teresa Cirillo, who I consider the epitome of a minister's wife, the ultimate. Why? Uh, she's kept her joy. That's, that's, Brother Jimmy, you know how, you know, you've, You've sung for them all, from Catherine Kuhlman to Benny Hinn. You know what? You know that. Um, I said, I, so I found this moment to unwrap that moment. And I said, how have you lived with a 75-year-old dynamo whose global plane flies all over the world? His, his pilots speak five languages, and he is just continuous. He, he went from Bangor, Maine, 
in his jet to England in like four hours and 40 minutes. That's pretty fast. 650 mile hour range average. I said, how have you managed to keep such joy? And to see a 75 year old man of God holding hands with his wife constantly and stroking. I remember one morning him, you know, getting me breakfast at his house, Brother Marcerillo, and he was just, you know, around the table getting me, what do you want? You like this? You want this? You want the eggs? And you want this? And, and they were just incredibly happy. And to see a 75-year-old happy preacher is a wonderful experience. That's why Brother Holton means a lot to me. And he says... Um, I said, how have you done this? I was unwrap I was investing, unwrapping this moment in excellence, extracting everything from this moment, because I know their schedule. He's got a five-year-old plan from 75 to 80. I remember the morning he shared it with me, came downstairs from the hotel, and the first thing he told me, he says, God told me this morning to put on the big coat, put on the big coat, put on the big coat, put on the big coat. She said a statement that is unlike any statement I've ever heard. She said, the way he chooses to spend his time does not offend me. I think it's worth writing down. The way he chooses to spend his time does not offend me. When Sister Teresa Cirillo said those words, something ignited in me. She said, if he wants to study all day and be alone, I'm not offended. If he wants to fly to China tomorrow, I'm not offended. The way he chooses to spend his time does not offend me. Men, try to find that. This is too late, Brother Mike. I already got my wife. Isn't that a phenomenal? Isn't that a phenomenal statement? The way he chooses to spend his life. His time does not offend me. I asked Tommy Barnett, how in the world do you manage a 15,000 member congregation, a dream center with hundreds of people you're feeding every day, they feed thousands every day, and fly around, he says, I can tell you every hour of every day in advance what I'll be doing. I can tell you what right now what I'll be doing next week, Thursday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. He said, I have established and standardized my life what I will do each day. I went around the table and list and because they know something I don't know. It was not a moment for teaching. It was a moment for receiving knowledge. It was my protege moment, not my mentorship moment. You must distinguish, Josh. You've got to distinguish the difference in customers, the difference in a moment, and that's continuously evaluating that moment. Investing attentiveness. Attentiveness is the seed, and the reward is unending knowledge. Develop a relentless pursuit of quality in the moment. The other day, they sent from the office here a DVD for me to view. The outside did not have an insert. The inside did not have the proper description. And I said, return it and have them do it right and bring it back to me. Who do you want to come get it? I said, the person who presented it. I want the person who sent me this DVD, unmarked, unlabeled, ugly. I can't live with ugly. I'm not into ugly. If you are, welcome to it. There's lots for you. It's an unending buffet. But I can't live with ugly. Send it back and have the person 
who did it to come get it, redo it, and present it. So when this person, who's a wonderful person on our staff, precious, treasured, and he told me, they said, I knew the moment. I said, oh, my Lord. I said, yeah. And I said, now, son, the reason I did this is I'm not mad. I want you to develop an unwillingness to live with low quality. And I wanted to create a memory of your drive all the way to my house. <laughs> and the reason I made you drive to my house to pick it up is so you would think and meditate on it. He said, I did the whole trip. I said that I succeeded. My goal was for you to have a memory. We'll get into a lot more of this in the main service. Let me talk to you about another key to excellence. It's finding people to emulate. Success leaves clues. Who are the people you admire in a certain area? And copy what they do. You don't become what they are. You copy things they do. You are authentic. You are an original. When I go through a GQ magazine and I see a combination I like, I tear that out and try to duplicate it. I, I like that. I want to do that. If I find a design of a building I like, I tear that out. I want to do that. I like that. I want to duplicate that. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Why? They couldn't see Christ. <laughs> so Christ left his little Christ here. This is what we're trying to, and I'm saying that because you follow successful people. What are they doing that you should do? You'll also learn things you don't do, but you follow things they do. So find people of excellence. Find things you like, magazines, television, whatever. The presentation, we'll show you in a few moments a video from our trip. They made a video, uh, Michael Cirillo and Miss Angie uh, Omo shared, just to create a, a wonderful video, a five-minute video for you to see in the main service of our trip. They had created a video regarding wisdom, a phenomenal video. They showed statements from Aristotle, Socrates, you know, and all the, and they did it to present me to Mexico in a school of wisdom for about 400 pastors and leaders there in Mexico. I was so impressed. I said, I want to copy that. That's what I see it. That's something I want. That's something I want. I search relentlessly for people who perform at high levels, their product, what did they do? I bought books yesterday at Barnes & Noble strictly for the layout of the cover because the cover was incredible. I would have never thought of that had I not seen it. Seven is develop a perpetual savoring of moments of excellence. Develop a perpetual savoring. Taste it. Enjoy it. Receive inspiration from excellence. You'll require constant information or in inspiration. Inspiration births energy, but it also has limitations. It doesn't last forever. Have you noticed that? If you've ever started on a... <laughs> If you've ever started losing weight, I'm about a three-day man. I'm good at getting inspired for three days. Anybody else like me? But boy, keeping that, that information is sort of, or inspiration is hard. How do you keep inspiration? I think sound, view, associations. Savor moments of excellence. Taste it. Talk it. Enjoy it, extract from it, recognize it, reward excellence. Savor and put a great value on it continuously, continuously. Continuously move toward it. This week, your closet may be cleaned out. A month from now, it may look like a pig pen. Go back, 
Continuously remotivate yourself for excellence in everything. Praise God. We will become men of excellence. I said we will become men of excellence. Hold your Bible in your hand. Say, I love this word. It's healing me, changing me, motivating me. Thank you for your word. Praise God. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I want to also include you that are in our internet church. I call the internet church. It's a privilege today to have you a part. There in your home, start moving toward excellence. Excellence in moments, excellence in the day. Break, it, break down your mountain in pebbles. Don't try to do it all in one day. Don't try to do it all in an hour. Just start moving toward excellence in conversation, in your presentation of yourself, excellence throughout your home, excellence in accuracy so that what you say is so, and you can become a person of excellence, excellence in your integrity, excellence in attitude, you can become, and that's the purpose of the Word of God. It's the purple, purpose of relationship. The purpose of wisdom is to increase excellence because excellence creates perpetual reward. Continuous excellence creates perpetual reward. Father, thank you today for our family. We thank you that you're going to birth in us. And Lord, today's, today's purpose was to magnify an awareness of the rewards of excellence. Increase us today. Make us men of our word. Make us men of excellence. Excellence in our time management. Excellence in diligent completion of tasks. Show us the rewards of building a reputation for excellence. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I never tire of the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. Right and wrong, evil and righteousness, difference in people, difference in a countenance, difference in a moment, like the blind man crying out to Jesus. The dominant purpose for wisdom, and don't you love the wisdom of God? I'm so thankful you're listening today and watching and being a part of the internet, telling others about it. And I hope you're getting, by the way, I hope you're getting my daily podcast every single day on your iPod or your MP3. Every single day, two minutes of wisdom. Be a blessing. Sometimes I go a little over because I get excited. I want you to be a part of this ministry. I believe that when you get involved with God, he gets involved with you. I am one of the ministers of the gospel who believe the words of Jesus. I believe every word he said. When he told Peter that there would be a hundredfold return on any investment in the gospel, in Mark 10, 28 through 30, I believed him. When the word of God says in Malachi 3, that if I bring the tithe, which is 10% of my income, and the offering back to him, that he would open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing I don't have room enough to receive, I believe him. Why would I believe God about heaven and hell and not believe him about the blessing of the Lord? I want to pray over the seeds that you have been planting in this ministry. And by the way, I have an incredible gift you're going to love. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever offered. We're asking the Holy Spirit for 300 partners this week who will set aside a seed of $300 for our outreaches. I need your help. I want you to help me. Not just to feed a thousand children a day, which we do, or a thousand families, or underwrite the wisdom of Asia Bible College, or to underwrite the tent factory in South Africa, or the home of hope, but that we can go into 100 countries with the gospel. I'm holding in my hand the wisdom quick scan Bible. The Wisdom Quick Scan Bible. I have never in my life found a Bible easier to read. As you know, for many years, I've read the Bible through 40 chapters a day, every single month of my life. When I found out that I could offer it to you inside of some of the teaching that I've been doing and I'll do today, I want you to have it. Call me right now, plant your seed of 300 and watch God move. 